You must have been surprised. There is the divorce papers on the table. I've been staying at my parents' house since yesterday. I'm not leaving until you visit me and apologize. I see. That's what you meant. Then you don't have to come back. Huh? There's nothing for me to be sorry for. Huh? You're still acting like that after all this time? That's enough. I'm seriously going to divorce you. We are already divorced. My name is Eva. I'm a 30-year-old office worker. I got a job at a public company after college, and I've worked very hard at my job. The reason I can work hard at my job is because of the people around me. The most important one is my classmate from junior high school, Lina. Lina and I were in the same badminton club in junior high school. We were very good friends, but we also competed with each other. We were also rivals and aimed together for the top. We always stayed late at club practice to train together. Before test, we studied together and competed with each other for the highest score. We went to the same high school and even the same university. We were always together and engaged in friendly competition. He was a good friend who greatly influenced my life. Even after I started working, I kept in touch with Lina. We would update each other on what was going on and motivate each other to work harder. After graduating from university, Lina went to Japan by herself to study abroad. After that, she got a job at a local company. Since she was a child, she had always wanted to live abroad. I think it's amazing that Lina was able to make that dream come true. She taught me that if you follow your dreams, a path will always open up for you. When I call her sometimes and ask her about her life overseas, I could feel that she was very happy and joyful. It makes me want to pursue my ideals too. There is another person who has had a great influence on my life. My husband James. I met him when I was 24 years old. I met him on a blind date. He was few years older than me and worked for a big company. He seems to be a generous person. He seemed interested in me too. We started our relationship after a series of dates. And after a year of dating, we got married. The reason I decided to marry my husband was his kindness. At the time, when my husband and I were dating, I was stuck at work. I didn't know if I was trying in the right direction. Everything I was doing was not working. I was not getting any result at all. When I joined the company, my boss had high expectations of me. I was very impatient with the lack of result. My husband, with whom I was in a relationship, helped me keep my cool. It's okay. You don't need to act like an honor student right now. For the first five years of your career, just use your use as a weapon and try to do whatever you want. It is better to be selfish and to push through what you want to do. From the standpoint of seniors and supervisors, you wouldn't feel so bad about cleaning up the mess when a newcomer makes a mistake. It's not such a bad feeling, so don't try to fit in. Just do what you want to do. I'm not a senior or a boss in the same company as you, so maybe it would be a little irresponsible that I say like that. When he encouraged me like this, I finally started to relax. Thanks to that, I was able to go to work in a very relaxed state since then. He seems to be happy to see me enjoying my work every day. So I decided to marry him. With him, I knew that we would overcome anything together and be happy. I was convinced of that. After we got married, my husband was very kind too. Whenever I had a challenge at work, he would say kind words to me and encourage me. 
So no matter how many times I felt like my heart was about to break, I was able to put my heart into my work without giving up. I have lived my life with the support of my best friend and my husband. And just recently, my hard work paid off and I was promoted to a higher position. I was so happy that I reported it to my husband when I got home. James, I did it! What the matter? You are so excited. I'm going to be a section chief from this spring. Oh, really? Yeah. I feel like all my hard work is finally being recognized. I see. Congratulations. Thank you. I bought some steak to celebrate, so let's have a nice dinner today. I was so happy and buoyant about my promotion. I didn't notice the change in my husband right away. But little by little, his attitude changed. He began to act more and more unfriendly. I'm home. Welcome home. Aren't you home late these days? I'm sorry, I was checking the document my subordinate had prepared. I'm a little late. Hurry up and make me dinner. Huh? Yeah, of course. My husband used to do the housework when he could, but now, when he comes home earlier than I do, he doesn't do any of the chores anymore. On the contrary, he sometimes speaks down to me. Why do you always come home so late? No, it's because my responsibilities and workload have increased since I became a section chief. That's not an excuse. Some people come home on time even if they have a higher position. Eva, you are just not very good at what you do. It takes you a long time and you have to work over time. That may be so, but I'm doing my best. Anyway, don't work over time in a way that makes you neglect the chores. I can concentrate on my work if you keep being like that. I'm sorry. I've never had my husband talk to me like this before. I was confused. I had no idea that I was inconveniencing him by working late. I still had respect and affection for my husband at that time. At this point, I couldn't see that he was just saying these things to me out of jealousy. But even so, I was still very busy at work. It wasn't about my capacity or anything like that. But every time I came home late, he would get angry. Why can't you do a better job of balancing chores and work? How can you be a section chief if you can't multitask? I gradually lost confidence in myself because of such criticism. It was only natural that I called my best friend Lina. Hello, Eva? Lina, how are you? Did something happen? Yeah. You know, when you ask me how I'm doing, Eva, you are always the one who is not well. Lina understands me the best. I started to cry and told her about my current situation, that my husband is very hard on me and always belittles me, that I have to do all the housework myself and it is physically demanding of me. Lina listened quietly and encouraged me. I know that you are always doing your best even though we are apart, I know that you are working hard somewhere, and that makes me work harder. Besides, it's thanks to your hard work that you became a section chief. I'm sure the results are the best proof of that. Do you think so? And about the sudden change of your husband's attitude, maybe it's jealousy. What? Jealousy? My husband is jealous of me? Does he hold a position higher than section chief at his workplace? Oh no, he doesn't. I knew it. But he works for a big company. I don't think he'd be jealous of me. I think men are sensitive about career advancement, regardless of the size of the company. That's why he was so disappointed that you, who is younger than him, got promoted before him. Oh no, 
If that's the case, what should I do? It's difficult. Like you, I'm kind of a career woman. Maybe wait for your husband to be promoted too? Then I will need to be patient. You're right, sorry. Hmm, yeah. I'm sorry, you don't need to be in worry. No, but I'm trying to come up with the perfect answer for you. It's okay. I feel so much better just being able to talk to you like this. Can I call you again? Maybe we can talk about some stupid meaningless topic next time. Great! Let's do that! Whenever you want to call, just let me know. Having called Lina, I felt like I was unraveling from all the negativities I had been feeling and the idea that my husband might be jealous of me Lina's word made me realize that I should not mention that I was busy with work so much. But even though I was careful to do so, my husband's attitude toward me became worse and worse. In the worst cases, he even restricted my activities. When I was on the phone with Lina on my day off, he came into my room. He suddenly hung up on Lina. What are you doing? What are you doing? Are you interrupting my day off? I wasn't that loud that I would disturb you, wasn't I? Don't talk back to me. You are the one who does whatever you want and skip out on the chores. You are the one who is a bad wife. You are the one who lounges around on the living room couch all the time. Why should I be the one to take the blame? Housework is a wife's job. The one who can't do her job right gets blamed. Why are you always looking down on me like that? We are husband and wife. We should be equal. What? Are you seriously saying that? You and I are equals? Wake up and don't say such a thing when you are awake. Anyway, you better be a better wife. Or I will divorce you. Divorce? I'm serious. If you don't want to get a divorce, you need to get your head out of your ass and think about what you are doing. With that, my husband walked out of my room. I watched his back in a daze. I hurriedly sent a message to Lina and apologized for the sudden disconnection of the phone. Lina heard my husband yelling a little bit. Are you okay? She was worried about me. When I told her what my husband had just said, she was very surprised. His jealousy is getting out of control. It's a little hard to believe that he would say something like divorce so casually. Lina responded that way, and I thought the same thing. From this moment on, my love for my husband was pretty much gone. And then something happened that made all my barely remaining affection vanish at once. One day, I received a report from Lina that she was getting married. I was overjoyed to hear that my best friend was getting married. A little later, I received an invitation to the wedding. The wedding would take place in Japan, where Lina lived. Of course, I was going to attend. I had applied for time off from work in advance for that day, but I couldn't tell my husband. I was sure he would object. But I've already booked the airline tickets. I thought it was time to tell him. I decided to tell my husband that I was going to Japan to attend Lina's wedding. Sure enough, my husband was vehemently against it. Don't be ridiculous. You can't even do the housework properly. And you're going to travel abroad? It's not traveling. I'm going to my best friend's wedding. I don't care which one. I won't allow you. You are my wife, so you should stay at home. Otherwise, I will divorce you. Why are you so quick to say you will divorce me? Just because I'm your wife doesn't mean I can't be away from home. Just because I'm your wife doesn't mean I have to do all the housework. Besides, I will be back home right after the wedding. You will be alone only for a few days. Shut up! I clearly told you you can't go. 
no matter how you try to convince me, can't you at least be a little decent? My husband was so angry and he retreated to his room. At that time, I knew I could no longer live with him. From then on, I obeyed my husband so as not to provoke him. I managed to endure until I went to the wedding. I sent my luggage for the wedding to my parents' house so that my husband would not find out. On the day I was leaving for overseas, I stopped by my parents' house and then went to the airport. The plan seemed to have worked and my husband did not find out. I arrived safely in Japan. When I arrived at the airport in Japan, I received many messages from my husband. Then, as soon as he saw that I had read the messages, he called me. Hey, where are you wandering around without coming home this late? Well, I'm in Japan. What? I told you so. I'm going to Japan today for my best friend's wedding. I told you I don't permit you. I don't need your permission. I'm seriously going to divorce you if you keep acting like this. I was about to say that I'm tired of that kind of treat. But at that moment, Lena arrived at the airport to pick me up. I told my husband I had to go and I hung up the phone. After that, I muted my husband's message and was happy to see my best friend again for the first time in a long time. That day, Lena showed me around and we had dinner together. The next day, I attended Lena's wedding. Lena was so beautiful, dignified, and shining beyond words. I was happy on my way back to the US, thinking it was a lovely wedding. But on the way home from the airport, I started to feel depressed. I had to face that man. I hated it so much, but I opened the door of my house with all my might. But my husband was still not home. He should have been home around this time. I entered the living room with a sense of relief. But then I was surprised to see something on the table. It was the divorce papers. My husband's section was already filled out, so my husband must be trying to threaten me like this. Well, maybe he really wants to divorce me. Either way, it was in my favor, so I picked up the divorce papers and I packed my bags and left the house. Then I got in my car and went to my parents' house. My parents were surprised that I suddenly came home with a big bag of stuff. But they heard what happened and told me I should get a divorce. My parents filled out the witness form and I filled out my part. And I filed the divorce papers at the municipal office. I was relaxing at home for the first time in a long time when I received a phone call from my husband the next night. I was surprised because I had expected him to call me the day before. Anyway, I decided to answer the phone. Then my husband started talking to me in a superior tone, as if he has a big grin on his face. Were you surprised? You found the divorce paper on the table. I have been staying at my parents' house since yesterday. I'm not leaving until you visit me and apologize. I see. So that's what this is about. Then you don't have to come back. Huh? There's nothing for me to be sorry for. Huh? You are still acting like that after all this time? That's enough. I'm seriously divorcing you. We are already divorced. What? I'm glad you already had your sign on the paper. I was thinking of leaving you anyway when I get back. So you and I are strangers now. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You are kidding, right? Of course not. In the first place, you're the one who put the divorce papers there. Oh no, that was just a threat. Give me a break. You think threatening me like that is going to make me more obedient? I'm the one who needs a break. 
Why do I have to be abused every day just to satisfy your little ego and your petty self esteem? Just because you feel bad that I got promoted ahead of you, you are so lame for repeatedly making remarks that torment me. I had no idea you were such a small man. Shut up! Don't boss me around just because you got promoted ahead of me a little bit. I'm not bossing you around. I'm just telling you the truth. You thought I was lower than you when we were first married and when we were dating, so you could be nice to me. And you thought it was cool that you were giving me good advice. You were so satisfied from yourself back then, but in reality, you were a jealous, prideful person. You probably didn't even realize it. Good for you. Thanks to me, you are aware of your flaws. You bitch! You are mocking me, aren't you? Are we done? It's too much trouble. I'm hanging up. I don't have time to waste a phone call with a stranger and get into a useless fight. Unlike you, I have a high position at my workplace and I'm busy with work. I said that and hung up the phone. My ex husband is probably furious right now. I have never wanted to feel superior by bragging about my title, but I've been told some pretty nasty things by my ex husband. That's why I dared to say something to my ex husband to get on his nerves. After that, as for my ex husband, according to our mutual acquaintance, he was very angry with me. I'm going to remarry a woman who is more beautiful than her and be happy first. He was so determined that he started using a dating app. However, the beautiful woman he met and went out with turned out to be a marriage swindler and he lost all of his savings. She took all of his savings, which amounted to several million dollars, in one fell swoop. As expected, my ex-husband was mentally exhausted by the incident. Now he has no self-confidence in himself, and he seems to be in a very gloomy mood every day. People around him have been leaving him. He has it coming. It was a good chance for me to be able to witness what happens with people when they lose one's cool. Meanwhile, I have been working harder and harder. I've grown up to be in charge of several big projects now. Lena and I are still in touch. I told her that I was going to take a long vacation to visit her in Japan. Until then, I will work very hard and try my best to show her how I've grown up even more. Jealous men are so lame, aren't they? And it's also lame that he thinks he can get her to obey him by flashing divorce papers at her. In other words, Eva's husband is too lame. It's a good thing she left such a lame man. Eva have enough income to live on her own. Next time, please find a man who doesn't have meaningless ego.